What's going on investors, AK from Fallible here. And I've been seeing a lot of comments lately saying, AK, AK, talk about the trade wars, AK, the trade wars. Now, first of all, I thought I was talking about fun stuff all the time. The last video was talking about robots taking over the markets and I had the cool thumbnail with the Terminator, you know, half Arnold, half machine. Was that not fun for you? I guess not because you guys keep asking for trade war, trade war, trade war. And you know it's not a real war, right? If you wanna see some entertaining war, go watch Game of Thrones. But okay, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the trade war. And for the record, the reason I haven't been talking about it is because it hasn't been a main driver of price action in the market. Which you've seen because the market seems to keep going up, up and up, right? just completely disregarding what's happening with these trade wars. And at least for the next few months, the trade wars probably won't have an impact on the market. All the other factors we've been talking about in previous videos are what is actually driving the market. But these trade wars could become a bigger deal down the line. But really, macro events like this have a slow burn. It's a real slow burn, like when you're at the gym on the stair climber and you're just gritting your teeth because it just hurts and oh, you're just so glad that you're sweating so much because your tears kind of blend in with the sweat. See, it's that kind of slow burn. And like I said, that's how all macro works. Like China's debt problem, the EU collapsing, Brexit, they all take a long, long time to play out. The way macro events work is they take a ton of time to build up and then all at once you'll see massive price movements when these events actually take effect on the market. So it's likely going to be the same thing here with these trade wars. So whenever a macro narrative first develops, the media loves to hype it up. And that's because they're the media, they need stories. That's how they make their money, they need the headlines, right? The clicks, the advertising, and all that good stuff. But just because the media is talking about a story doesn't mean it actually has an impact on the market yet. And that's what you see in the first stage of a lot of these macro events. Now eventually the hype dies down because the media needs a new story because the old story gets old. So today they're talking about trade wars and tomorrow they'll be talking about Trump kicking a pigeon. Just whatever's hot at the time is what they're gonna be talking about. But then once the media moves away from the narrative doesn't mean that that narrative stops developing. Just because you're not watching something doesn't mean it's not there. Just ask the people in Flint still drinking lead. So this narrative keeps building and building and building and it builds for so long that everyone stops paying attention. And then when it finally does impact the market for real, they're caught completely off guard. They're completely surprised. And then that's where you see the huge volatile displacements in market prices. So right now though, as far as the trade wars go, we're still in the hype up stage by the media. No real impact on the market yet. But I guess we can still talk about it. So in our opinion, Trump focusing so much attention on trade deficits is kind of dumb because the way he's looking at the whole situation is way too simplistic. Trade deficits aren't necessarily bad, especially when you compare them to the balance of payments for a country. But we're not going to get too deep into all this technical econ stuff. Now instead of trade deficits, what Trump should be focused on is the actual trade abuses that are going on. And the number one culprit there is China, who's been taking advantage of the West and the US for the last 20 years. They are always up to no good over there. First off, they aggressively manipulated their currency between 2001 and 2008. And now their currency is actually way overvalued. Second, the Chinese government is always helping their companies steal IP from other companies around the world. So this started with ripping off European high-speed rails in the early 2000s and then it spread to pretty much everything else. Just recently, there was an article in the news about these Chinese companies stealing the intellectual property of Micron technology. I think it was in Business Insider or something. But really, it's just ridiculous. And to top all this off, we all know how many restrictions China puts on exports into their country. They make it so hard for any foreign company to come into their country and set up shop. And of course, the government is using whatever tools they can to make sure that the Chinese companies are doing better than the foreign ones. So it's by no means a level playing field. Now, against China, the US should have all the leverage in the negotiation. And that's because the US as a country is very self-sufficient. We've got most of the demand we need right here. Exports are really only a small part of our GDP, which is not the same case in China, who heavily relies on exports. So really, in any negotiation about exports, we should be in a very strong position compared to China. But the problem that we're facing is that Trump is also starting trade wars with all our major trading partners, including our very close allies. So that puts us in a very risky position. So hopefully, Trump kind of backs off on going hard against Europe and Germany. But it looks like he really doesn't like Merkel, and uh, I guess he doesn't like Audis either. See, the smart move would be to work with Europe to coordinate a response against China. I told you about all the crooked things that they do over there, so it makes sense to work together to put them in check. But what we're at risk of is all these countries that we've been pissing off with these trade wars banding together and having a coordinated response against us. 
And obviously that would not be a good look for the US. But again, this is gonna be one of those slow burn scenarios where nothing's gonna be too impactful for at least a few months. So there's a few things that we're watching while all this plays out. One is the market, because we also know that Trump watches the market and he grades how he's doing based off how the market is doing. So if the market starts stumbling, Trump may take it as a signal to back off all this trade war stuff. But if the market keeps shooting up like it is, then he might actually become more aggressive. So that's something we're gonna watch. So, you know, who knows? Another group we're watching is the Fed to see whether they change their rate hike cycle or slow down on their quantitative tightening. Now this is very unlikely, but if it does happen, then it should be bullish for stocks in the near term. Because we know that more liquidity means better stock prices. But that's only if the response to their stimulus outweighs the response to the tariffs in the market. And we're watching China because they could respond to these trade wars by providing more stimulus themselves. And even though that's unlikely, that would put a floor under emerging markets and commodities. But all in all, the trade wars aren't affecting markets right now. But we're going to keep an eye on them to see what happens as things unfold. But as far as our analysis goes right now, there's other important factors that are pointing to much higher prices in the stock market. So keep your focus on the important factors and I guess you could enjoy the trade wars as the show that they are. Now if you want more market analysis like this, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for notifications of future videos. I'll see you in the next video, but in the meantime, stay fallible out there. Bye.